I'll read the form of words that I'm proposing and then seek a seconder. So the recommendation is uh, points one through three of the recommendation in the business paper to adopt this residential housing strategy. And then a new point four and point five being that council recognises many submissions have raised the possibility of Oakville and Moralia being an area for future residential development. As such, that council should take undertake consultation with the communities of Oakville and Moralia to determine if there is support in the community for residential development in the future. The consultation should be similar to the process used for the Kurrajon Kermond investigation area in that it should seek to engage as many people as possible in these communities to gain an understanding of what type of residential development they would like to see in these areas, if any. And then point five, that the results of the consultation be reported back to council for consideration. That being my motion, I'll seek a seconder. Is there a seconder for that? Second, Councillor Richards. Thank you, I'll now speak to that. So what I wanna say is the, the work that we're doing here, I regard as some of the most important that we're going to do in this term of council, along with the renovation of our LEP and DCP. I welcome this housing strategy and I note, for example, that it says that we will easily meet our five year target of 1,150 dwellings and the more speculative target of 200 dwellings per annum towards 2036 without any other areas beyond those that are already on our radar being gazetted or investigated or canvassed for future development. Indeed, I note that the housing strategy states that the 2036 population projection has been reduced to 77,000 people, which is only an increase of 10,000 from 2016. Now, I don't wanna make our debate on this question all about one specific area, this housing policy has far reaching implications for the whole LGA. But in adopting this strategy, we cannot ignore the fact that there are some areas of our city that are feeling significantly greater pressure for development than others due to the proximity of intensive urban development. And I'm thinking specifically of Oakville and Moralia. Now, the only mention that these areas get in our proposed policy is on page 123, where it says that there is potential in vineyard to release unconstrained lands to the north of the existing vineyard release area. But it then goes on to say that the final alignment of the outer Sydney orbital poses a significant constraint and investigation, only the investigation for release cannot proceed until the alignment has been finalized. I agree with that sentiment but I also agree that to give some certainty to this community, which is being seriously split between those who are for and against development, that we have to do better than this fairly cursory mention. I note that of the public submissions that we received, only 14 were written and authored by people or stakeholders to express their own views, and that 256 people were prepared to sign a boilerplate letter which was authored anonymously by a proponent of development who did not disclose to signatories that they would benefit personally from any potential rezoning of their land on the western side of Boundary Road. Clearly, there is a pressing need to know what the true sentiment towards future development is in these communities. Groups or individuals asserting that they speak for all or at least a clear majority of households in those suburbs cannot be doing so on the basis of any evidence that all landowners have expressed their view. And indeed, for those who are in favour of development, what standard of development are we prepared to endure? On the eastern side of Boundary Road, the release areas of Box Hill North, the Gables, the Hills of Carmel, have caused concern. There's road congestion, dust, construction noise, and the style of development resulting on the eastern side of Boundary Road is significantly poor in quality. Houses that nearly spill onto the road with little frontages, no tree cover, no eaves, walls so close to fences, you can't walk around them. I think of that standard as incompatible with what we would want in the Hawkesbury, especially in lands lying adjacent to a national park. In fact, I think that what's happening east of Boundary Road is a tragedy. If we are to have development in the Hawkesbury, this is not an example I believe that even proponents of development would want us to follow. 
What I'm suggesting in this motion is that we task council staff to undertake some comprehensive consultation with landowners in these suburbs to work out what people really want, how they envision their corner of the Hawkesbury to look like in five, 15 or 25 years from now. I've spoken to council staff and suggest that this be similar to the uh, community consultation that we conducted in Currajong Kermond uh, a few years ago. And once the corridor issue is resolved, and it will in time, we cannot claim to be fairly representing the wishes of this semi-rural community where there are still active agricultural and equine lands until we've done a better job to work out what this community really wants. This policy does not put Oakville on the radar for future development. The Greater Sydney Commission is certainly against it and the constraints are formidable. I decry the speculation that's occurring amongst people to try and uh, increase people's expectations about the pace of development that might occur. And I think that at least asking this community what they want in detail is the best first step we could take at this time. I commend it to you. Thanks, Councillor Zamprogno. Thank you very much. Look, uh, I'm aware that we, we are walking a fine line here. But what I wanted to say in summary is that we can't do nothing. I have strong views about development in Oakville, uh, for what it's worth, and I'm on the record, I'm against the subdivision of Oakville. But equally, I want to be a diligent representative for people in the same area. And uh, when there is such acute pressure that is splitting our community between people who have a fatalistic attitude and think of development as a fait accompli, or people who can accept but without endorsing the inevitability of development and want us as a community and as a council to have the greatest degree of agency so that we can have a kind of solution that we can be proud of. The kind of solution that we would not be proud of is the kind of urban carve up that we see on the east side of Boundary Road. But those people in Oakville, if they were asked, may come back to us and say that they would love for us to continue to advocate for detached dual occupancy or a large lot subdivision like Windsor Downs. And that would provide a buffer between the intensive development that we see elsewhere and the National Park. And it would allow us to preserve some of the character of Oakville and Moralia. But again, we are not going to get there if we do nothing. Now, I hear the concerns that are being expressed about this being tacked on to the urban housing strategy. And if anybody has even the slightest hesitation, then I would say that they should vote against this motion and endorse the recommendation in the business paper. And we will address this in a different form in the new year. But I put this forward this evening because we can't be idle when that pressure continues to grow and continues to divide this community and leaves us with a really significant problem about how we articulate either the value of what we have and why we should keep it. And again, keep in mind that there is workable agricultural land, equine lands, passive recreational land, uh, remnant Cumberland woodland uh, stands, uh, eco uh, wildlife corridors, um, wonderful bird life, and so on, uh, and the needs of a growing Sydney. So uh, I'll, I'll offer this up in the form that it's in. Uh, I, I hear you. And if it's voted down, I'll endorse the recommendation in the business paper. And we'll see what else we can do for that community in Oakville and Moralia next year. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Zabrunga. There's a few councils with hands up, but that was right of reply. So this is any points of order. I'm going to go ahead. And, um, Mr. May, I did foreshadow the motion. <clears throat> yeah, this one hasn't failed yet. No, no, but I'm just reminding you because you're not reading my notes, so that's okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. No, no, I did. I did acknowledge at the time that you foreshadowed a motion. But yeah. Um, so put uh, the yes, motion. You did. Thank you. Put the motion. All those in favour, please raise your hand. Favour is Councillor Connolly, Councillor Richards, Councillor Zamprogno, Councillor Tree, not Councillor Reynolds. Against. Uh, Councillor Calvert, Councillor Wheeler, Councillor Reynolds, Councillor Ross, Councillor Rasmussen. Councillor Lyons Bucket, Councillor Cotlash, Councillor Gary, declare it lost. Um, and Councillor Rasmussen has foreshadowed a motion. Yes, I 